So my boyfriend of the past five years and I just moved in together in Texas at the end of July 2020. During pandemic 2019 and everything we are still trying to get everything in order, but all things considered it's going well. We are both from Illinois and met in high school, he is one year older than I. It was long distance for five years as he is in the military, and I stayed in Illinois to go to college. So my parents helped me move down here at the end of July, and we are renting a lovely house with a nice fenced-in yard for the dogs and mostly wonderful neighbors. I still don't have a job here yet, and despite looking everywhere in my field pandemic 2019 makes it hectic. So I am home during the day and my boyfriend is working every other week at the base and at home respectively. Between exercising, applying for jobs, caring for the animals two large dogs and one cat, and unpacking things, I'm fairly busy. The neighborhood is newer, fairly low crime, working class, kid-friendly, pretty average in my opinion. About two weeks after moving in and my parents fly back to Illinois. It's the weekend and boyfriend and I are watching TV, cat is upstairs, dogs are sleeping on the couch. Our doorbell rings and a woman's voice shouts, neighbor. So not thinking anything of it, we put the now barking dogs out back and answer. Now my boyfriend is active duty military, six foot two, relatively fit, etc. Not the type of guy most would mess with. I'm five foot six, pretty average female, work out regularly, unassuming and ordinary looking. We open the door to a 35, 40 year old woman, about five foot two, maybe slightly overweight, but not super heavy, generally average looking as well. She has an eight, 10 year old girl with her, same nationality and similar features, so I'm assuming mother daughter. The lady keeps social distance and is so far polite, speaks very fast, and the more she talks the more distracted and scattered it seems. She is looking for her dog. A male chihuahua that got out, described by her as mangy and ugly. I have seen this dog and can confirm with professional veterinary experience that it actually has a severe and untreated case of mange that has clearly been going on for a while doesn't just happen overnight. Her disregard for the dog's declining health was off-putting at first. We simply said we hadn't seen him for several days and left it at that. Fast forward two weeks. Boyfriend is at work and I'm home on the computer applying for jobs. Dogs are asleep again and cat is upstairs. Again the doorbell rings and a female shouts, neighbor. I see through the peephole that the same neighbor lady with her daughter is there. I shout, one second, and put the dogs out back. This is where I feel I should have just followed my gut feeling and not said anything. Just let the dogs bark till she leaves. I answer. She immediately goes into a monologue laughing about how the dog with mange got run over the other day, so you don't have to worry about him anymore, and the daughter jumps into it laughing about the dog splattered on the road. I say nothing, having the door open just a crack for my face. Next she asks to borrow our house phone to call her mechanic. This gets me because one it's 2020 and really no one still has a house phone, and two, when asked further about her mechanic, she would not give details. I said we don't have a house phone and let me see about my cell. I close and lock the door. This is where my gut hits me like a semi-truck. The kid, the attitude about the dog, haven't I seen the lady before somewhere? Her mannerisms, her speech patterns, her eye contact attitude, it all was falling together for me. I opened the door a tad and said I couldn't find my phone or it was charging from dead or something like that. She offered to come in and help look, trying to look through the crack in the door now. I said sorry no, because of pandemic 2019, and closed and locked the door, and let the dogs back in. Cue a search on my neighborhood watch app. There are pictures of her on security footage, trespassing, ringing many people's houses making the same odd remarks at all hours, taking pictures of random car plates, driving in very slow circles aimlessly, and stopping to take photos of people in cars and houses blocking people's driveways with her truck, always with at least one of three children in tow. One of the kids she totes in a stroller and crosses busy highways at rush hour waving down cars. The cops have been called to their house at least three X since boyfriend and I moved in. We're not answering for her anymore. Not mine, but my aunt's neighbor scares me a lot. She told my aunt that she used to do heavy drugs but her boyfriend now husband saved her, and she's been clean for like 10 years or so. The scary part comes with the last pandemic. When the pandemic started, she told my aunt that virus is the signal of the end of times, and COVID-infected people were sinners who will become zombies. 
She says she's not letting the zombies eat her children, so she practices how to cut heads every day with a sword she keeps on her room. Because she could never use a fire gun to hurt someone, even if it's a zombie. That lady is probably carrying addiction side effects, but still, she's effing terrifying. African exchange student who invited himself in when I moved into my apartment. He had brought an open bottle of red wine and wanted me to drink. I didn't. My biggest mistake was letting him into my home. I wanted to get to know people because I was in the process of rebuilding my life after some tough times, so I didn't think there was anything fishy going on until I noticed the wine. He wanted me to sit on his lap. I refused. He was very pushy. I realized I was probably going to get us assaulted if I didn't do something fast. I had been told by one of the other neighbor that one of the people living next to me was a neo-Nazi, so I decided to tell the guy this and pointed to the windows across from mine didn't have curtains yet and made up a story about how scary it was to live next to someone like that. I hoped it would make him less comfortable about being in my home, and it worked. I made up some shit about how I had to do my homework, and I would love to talk another day and thank you for the wine. At the door he hugged me and I was like, oh great, it's assault time. This guy is really strong. I have no chance. He leaned in and tried to kiss me, but I said something and I don't remember what it was anymore, but I managed to convince him to leave and we would talk later. As soon as he was out of my apartment, I kicked myself the rest of the day for being so stupid and letting myself be this vulnerable. He began standing outside my window at night and looking in. I got curtain. Then one day my dad was visiting, and I noticed through the curtains that the guy was back and had like four or five of his friends with him, all wearing hoodies and just standing in front of my window. It was late in the evening, by the way, and he had been doing this a lot. I told my dad and he yanked the curtains aside and sent them the death glare and the scattered immediately. Never saw them again, but soon after someone stole the seat to my bicycle. When I got a replacement seat and went out to put it on, I saw that the rest of my bike was gone. I may have been a coincidence, but I think the story is funnier if it's African guy who decided to F with me. I have had a lot of weird and creepy neighbors and most of them lived in that place, but none of them made me as nervous as African guy, and I still have no idea how I wasn't S assaulted that day. Everything about that guy was ready to pounce. Had a neighbor once who would urinate off his top step or stand there and play with himself whenever women walked past. Eventually spent a couple of weeks piling all his furniture, clothes, etc. on the front lawn. Covered the pile in petrol one morning, sat on top and lit a match. That was the end of his weird ways. My girlfriend 23 female lives by herself in Northern Ontario, Canada. The place is a two-story building divided into four separate apartment units. Hers is on the ground floor. When she got home and checked her mailbox today, there was this little handwritten note in it. It has no name on it, nor did it come in any sort of envelope, meaning the person placed it in there personally. My girlfriend doesn't know the other tenants, and she doesn't have any friends living in her area. So our immediate thought was that this might be some creep watching her. Does the note seem sketchy and alarming? Or is that a rather common and benign thing? If the former is the case, what measures should be taken? I currently don't live with her or even in the same country and won't be able to be with her until mid-December. Right now I'm looking into a security system with intrusion monitoring for her. I'd be very thankful for any other helpful advice or even just an assessment of the situation. I was like seven years old and my sister was five. I remember wearing my favorite sailor outfit that day. I'm a female. Anyways, my sister and I were walking around our low-income neighborhood looking for other kids to play with. We hear children laughing and found the source. Two kids were jumping up and down on a mattress in the backyard. We asked if we could play and ran to the front door. The boy and girl about our age answered the door and said that they would have to ask their dad. We followed them upstairs to a bathroom door where they knocked on the door. A man with curly black hair dripping wet and naked answered. The kids didn't seem shocked, but casually asked if we could jump on the mattress. Dad said okay, but that he had to talk to me alone first. They all went giggling downstairs. 
He took me to a bedroom and locked the door, then wrapped a white towel around his waist and proceeded to hang a camera from his neck. He rolled up my shorts as high they would go and put me in positions while taking pics of me. I don't remember anything after that, but just what he told me before I left. He said that if I ever told anyone that he would kill my parents and my sister. I told my mom when we moved to Arizona. Nothing came of it. I always wondered if he did that to his kids and others, and if he ever got caught. I've seen a post on here regarding their neighbors potentially spying on them and following them around so I wanted to share my experience. I have a similar issue, but I doubt they have hidden cameras anywhere as I'm very cautious and keep everything locked tight. It all started when I would try to sleep at night. They would walk right above my head and stomp as if they want me to hear them at 3 a.m. I changed my room around which was frequent and it never stopped. It's like they knew my layout and where I was sleeping because it was always right over my head. I didn't automatically assume they were being creeps until every time I went to another room. I'd simply go to watch TV or clean up etc and there would be a loud walking movement near the vent as if they're listening so I'd quickly go to my daughter's room and true enough loud stomping above my head. No big deal right, wrong, it became more frequent and still is happening. One day I was sitting with my daughter watching Frozen LL and heard stomping right above us so I turned the volume all the way up. The next thing I know boom it was like they threw a bowling ball above our heads. So after that I was fed up and I did what I thought was reasonable and bought a white noise device that shuts everything out. Not long after trying the device it works great at night by the way they complained to the manager about it. Now that I completely shut them out during the night they harass and follow me during the day. I was an assistant teacher so I'm not working right now and upstairs is an engaged couple which the guy doesn't work. They have no dogs or animals and the guy is roughly 350 pounds so I'm guessing it's him. I just don't understand why every time I go somewhere he's within that same exact spot stomping and trying to be noticed. I was trying to do research on him, and I noticed on their wedding registry wish list were six hidden cameras, which was a red flag for me. Now I'm scared to leave my apartment because I don't want them planting anything or potentially using a listening device. Has anyone had any problems like this? What did you do to take action? So last night around 11 p.m., I was downstairs sitting at a table facing the window in front of the backyard. My backyard is fenced, and right outside the fence is a golf course where deer usually stay. I've seen a coyote once, but it was in my front yard. However, people have seen them in the golf course before. Keep in mind, I'm in Texas. Anyways, at this time, I heard something crying from the left of the window. At first, I thought it was my sister watching a TikTok video or the little boy that lives with us crying, but it wasn't. Everyone was in their rooms, and I was the only one downstairs to hear this. This cry sounded like a baby wailing, wah, wah about twice, and then the sound diminished quickly. I could have sworn I heard footsteps outside or someone else there possibly making the baby or animal stop. Maybe very soft coaxing that was hard to make out. I may have just been extremely paranoid at that point because I couldn't move out of my seat since that sound was so disturbing. My eyes were tearing up like why. I don't believe in any ghosts or paranormal activity, but it was hella creepy. It's crazy because to the left of my backyard is the house of the friendly old neighbors I know, and they do not have kids. They have dogs who only bark loudly occasionally during the daytime. I do think I saw the car of someone visiting parked in their driveway yesterday, but I don't know about any babies. The sound was just too close to the window for it to be a neighbor whose backyard is like 50 feet away. Someone mentioned to me it could be someone playing an audio of a baby crying to lure me outside and kidnap me. Our neighborhood really doesn't have that stuff happening, and I don't know if anyone would climb our tall fences. Our fences also make loud noises when closed. Maybe the person entered or climbed from the short fence with a gate to the golf course, but who would be there at night? Some of our lights are activated by motion sensors too. I looked up videos of animal noises because another person suggested it was a fish or cat but I'm obviously in the South in TX. Also, the Fisher cat sounds like a high-pitched adult crying and not a baby. I listen to foxes, raccoons, deer, mountain lions, and bullfrogs, but nothing lol. If someone could please give me ideas, that'd be great. I wish I could have recorded it, but it was so quick, and my memory is Loki starting to fade.
Okay. So y'all, I have a creepy neighbor up the street. Duh. Anyway, he's a 40-year-old whose parents have been hateful towards us since we moved to our house on the street boyfriend and I. Anyway, this dude likes to skateboard up and down the street, which isn't really safe to many fast drivers around corners. He stops by the house for since reason because my boyfriend was outside. The guy starts talking about his life, his paintings that he does on drugs, his parents and whatnot. It just freaked me out. Not a good vibe. A couple days pass and my boyfriend and I are looking at my car. It was making a weird nose. We're night owls so it was because around 1am. I had just backed out of the garage and parked in my spot by the front door. As I'm walking into the house the guy is walking down the driveway. With a small flashlight. That scared the crap out of me. Again, I don't feel comfortable. He talked to my boyfriend about how his dad just got him and he got his father arrested. Life WTF. He says that his parents want to move to Paris and some crazy to stuff. His eyes were pinpoint my boyfriend says. He was definitely on something. That just the other night my boyfriend and I were doing some bonding time by cleaning done of his guns. Clean guns are happy owners. Good gun owners. You know, I know people won't like that when they read this, but this is America and whatnot. Anywho, as we're a couple guns in cleaning, I notice something out of the corner of my eye. I whip my head towards the front door and say, someone is at the front door. We both look at each other and grab a gun and load them. We put a mag in our guns and aim them towards the door. My boyfriend gets up and creeps towards the door. He opens it and gives me a WTF look. It's the frickin' neighbor. It's 1.30 a.m. We're inside our house, no lights on outside the house. WTF. My boyfriend talks to him for a couple minutes, and I knock on the window with some lame excuse to get him inside. He comes back inside and says the neighbor just wanted to talk to him about the same shit. The door was not locked, and he could have easily walked in. This is the second time he's come by at night time randomly. I feel like he's gonna keep doing it, and maybe he'll walk inside next time. I'm seriously creeped out. He may even come inside looking for my boyfriend. I don't understand why he keeps doing it. Edit. Boyfriend talk to the guy. Next time he comes by announced cops will be called. Door wasn't locked because boyfriend was going to go back outside and work on a truck in the garage. I've locked him out a couple times because I always make sure the door is locked when we're both in the house and going to bed. We were not going to bed. Boyfriend was going back outside after being a responsible gun owner. I know a lot of you won't think good of me because I own guns. Cool. I'm not here for your acceptance. I'm here to tell you of my creepy story. This happened about seven years ago. I was living with a friend, sharing a small apartment with a balcony. One day, a man moved into the apartment next to ours. He came to introduce himself, and he seemed nice at first. However, my opinion didn't last long. He started to invite himself to our place, staying for hours even though we'd give him hints that we wanted him to leave. We didn't want to seem rude, but we also didn't want to hang out with him. So we started avoiding him and pretending we were not home when he'd ring at our door. Also, we saw him following us in town, but we thought we were being paranoid and had no proof. But some day, or should I say, some night, my friend had left for a few days to see her family. I was watching South Park in bed, about to sleep, so the lights were turned off, and the glass door of the balcony was closed, but the shutters weren't entirely closed. I saw light coming from the balcony. At first, I really thought I was seeing things, but I saw the light getting closer to the glass door. I got scared, so what did I do as an 18-year-old girl? I chose to hide under blankets, of course. Then I called my mom, I swear this is really what I did. Honestly, I really don't know why I did that instead of just calling the police. I guess I was so scared that I lost control. I just remember I absolutely did not want that person to see me. I guess it worked because when I looked through the blanket, I didn't see any more light that person left. I was relieved and ran to close the shutters entirely. I'm pretty sure this was our neighbor. The person there, it was easy for him to get on our balcony as his was next to ours separated part with frosted glass and part with a small fence. Also, as I wrote, we've seen him following us. Again, I had no proof, so I didn't do anything. Luckily, it was the last time I saw him. A few days later, a woman rang our bell to ask us about that strange neighbor asking us if we've seen him lately. So I told her what happened and that I think it might be him. 
She said it was probably him, that he actually was mentally disturbed, that she was his doctor, and that he had disappeared the day I last saw him. She asked if we could call her if we got to see him so she could get him back to the hospital. We exchanged our phone numbers and she left. She called the next day to tell us she found him, and then we never heard about him again. There you go. Your English is quite good, and don't be too hard on yourself for not calling the police in that moment of fear. It's understandable. A strange middle-aged man came to my door on Wednesday night at around 9 p.m. I opened my door foolish, I know and peeped my head out because he was standing in my driveway after he knocked. I asked, how can I help you, he said. I felt that I should come by and check on you. I repeated, check on me, I don't know you. Do you live in the neighborhood? He said yes and pointed north. I said, okay. Then there was some silence because I was really confused about why he was at my property. He said, I'm not trying to scare you. I replied, well, you are because I don't know who you are and why you are here. He said he thought we could talk. I asked, talk? About what? He said he didn't know. I told him, sir, I think it is time for you to leave now. He motioned his ear to say he could really hear me. He never stepped closer to hear me better. I repeated, it is time for you to leave. He left promptly. I called my dad, boyfriend, cousin, and the non-emergency line. The officers never came to my property or anything. I was advised by family to get a ring camera installed and additional lighting. I live by myself on about an acre of land, but I do have neighbors. I got the ring camera installed on Friday afternoon. The man came back on Friday night at about 7.16. I heard a car pull up in my driveway. I peeped out my bedroom window and started to freak out because I saw his car but I could not see him. The ring live video was buffering, and I didn't know where he was on my property because I could not see his shadow at my door from the bedroom. I called 911 immediately. He did the same thing captured on the ring. He rang the bell and then stood away from the door, hands in his pockets, awaiting for me to answer. I didn't of course because I was literally shaking with fear and on the phone with 911. At this point, I was looking desperately out of my curtain when he walked to his car and saw me looking at him from my window. He got in his car and drove away. After I got off the phone with 911, I called my neighbors right away, and they came right away. They gave me a small pistol, I don't own any firearms yet. Needless to say, this has made me very nervous these last several days because I don't know what this man wants or if he will show up again. For anyone wondering why I opened my door and took time to speak with him, I actually thought he was confused. I don't know why I opened the door except to say that I did feel like it was okay because he wasn't in front of my door. He came off as confused during our conversation, but when I later mulled over it, that could have been a ploy to make me feel safe. I didn't take the bait. Any advice? Ideas of what I might be dealing with? Thanks. I've been fortunate not to have any truly creepy, weird neighbors. My oddest neighbor was also my coolest neighbor. He was also my landlord. He was in his 60s and his grandfather had built the house I lived in, making it well over one years old. For New Zealand a house that old is quite rare. Both his grandfather and his father had died in that house, which perhaps explained some of the weird and creepy experiences I had there. He had basically a museum in his basement of artifacts he had found over the decades. Some were worth hundreds of thousands. The entire collection would have been worth millions. And this was in the 1990s. It would be worth tens of millions now if they were still both alive, they're both dead now. And I don't know what happened to his collection. I hope a museum took it. He used to stay up until 3 or 4 a.m. watching TV while kneeling on a small, dirty old towel. He never sat in a chair. Whenever I had insomnia, I'd go over and have a cup of tea with him and chat while we watched South Park, which he loved. He had done some amazing things over his life, so it was always a great time spent chatting with him. He had spent years helping eradicate pests from islands around New Zealand to help save various native species. His best friend literally single-handedly saved the Kakapo from extinction. I met his friend several times and he never mentioned it once. It was only years later when I read Douglas Adams' last chance to see did I find out who that extremely taciturn, slightly grumpy, old bugger who would occasionally pop in for a couple was. I wish I had read Adam's book earlier. I'd have got him to sign it. 
Every Friday I would pop over and pay the rent. Usually his wife had made cookies and I'd have a cup of tea and a bicky before handing over the rent. If I ever went away for the weekend he would take money off the rent. Can't charge you rent when you're not there, was his explanation. He would often slip me another $20 on top of the discount for spending money. He would also give me a week's free rent for Christmas and on my birthday. He was already charging way less than the market rate. The weirdest thing about him was he just seemed to know where things were. Like he was totally attuned with the universe or something. He once went to an archaeological site in a swamp that the university had spent a month surveying with a full crew of grad students and equipment. In that time they found two old Maori waka canoes submerged in the swamp which they were very proud of. He spent a week there camping and found three more simply by wading out where he felt was a good spot and feeling with his feet. He reached into the mud and pulled out a small wooden spoon which, at that time, was the only pre-European eating utensil found. He had Maori artifacts in his basement that were literally priceless. He had offered them to the Auckland Museum, but they turned him down because they couldn't afford the gift duties. The Auckland Museum at that time was the biggest and most well-funded museum in New Zealand and, again at that time, they only had to pay duties on gifts worth more than $400,000. The average house price where we lived back then was under $100,000. That should give you some idea of the value of the items he had. Another time he went to a beach, randomly walked over to behind a sand dune, reached down to grab a handful of sand, and found several pre-European tattooing implements made from bone. These are tiny, the size of your fingernail. He found more in a few minutes than had been found in the entire country up to that point. His wife said all his major finds were like that. Just randomly walking to a spot he felt was interesting, poke around for a couple of minutes and bam. Some artifact of incredible value worth thousands, if not more. He also had a dead kiwi the bird, not the fruit or the person in his freezer, along with a massive chunk of ambergris which he, of course, had found on a random beach walk. One day he told his wife it was about time she learned to drive. Up until then he always drove and she had never bothered to get her license. He taught her to drive and she got her license. He then decided she needed her own car and bought her a brand new hatchback. They had this huge old 1970s Holden station wagon he kept in pristine condition. Just a couple of days after getting her the car he was helping a maid out with some DIY, told him he was feeling a bit tired, sat down and died instantly. It really felt like he knew exactly when he was going to die and spent the, the time beforehand sorting things out so his wife would be okay. When I was four, my parents got a divorce. My mom had moved into a three-house apartment complex after all was said and done. Right, middle, left we lived in the left apartment. It was a nice, quiet neighborhood and I had become best friends with the boy who lived behind us. We will call him Jack. One day while I was at my mom's went back and forth from mom's house to dad's. I asked if I could go outside and play around the yard or driveway area. There wasn't too much of a yard, but it was enough for four-year-old me who just wanted to go exploring and play in the dirt. As I am roaming around the little apartment complex, I come across a cat sitting in the basement window of the apartment on the right of us. I kneel down near the window and start talking to the kitty because you know I'm four and it's a pet. Out of nowhere my neighbor's son lets note that the neighbor's son is probably in his 20s pops his head in the window. He asks, do you want to pet the cat? I say, yes. He then proceeds to say, if you want to pet him or her I don't remember, it's not relevant you'll have to come inside. Of course I oblige because I want to pet the cat and I'm four and I don't know any better and I'm thinking this is my neighbor so he must be nice. Not sure if I've blocked this part out of my memory or if I blacked out. But the next thing I remember is being completely naked, laying on my stomach, with socks stuffed in my mouth. I honestly don't remember if he touched me or not. Regardless, it's clear those were his intentions his parents started to call for him from upstairs. He then told me to hide behind a sheet that was covering a mattress that was against the wall. So I did. I stood there completely naked, waiting for this guy to return. While I am waiting, I can hear my mom calling for me to come home. This is when I started to panic. He returned a few minutes later, but what felt like an eternity. I begged him to let me go home, and that I could hear my mother calling for me. Surprisingly, he let me get dressed and run home. Once I arrived home my mother was furious with me for making her worry about where I was. 
So I lied, I said I was at Jack's. Why did I lie to her? I don't know. I was scared, confused, processing. My mother also kinda scared me as a child. Another story for another day. Eventually, I did confess what had happened to my dad about maybe a week later. I remember going to the police station multiple times. Every time I had to talk to the police I would scream and cry while my dad would hold me in his arms trying to calm me down. Can you just imagine being four years old and having to continuously relive this over and over and over again? It felt like torture. I guess I couldn't do it anymore, so yet again I lied and said I made it up or some shit. How a four-year-old has that kind of an imagination is beyond me, but I highly doubt a little girl could make up such a story like this. Maybe I'm wrong. No one believed me. The police never looked into it any further as far as I know. This guy got away with it. Who knows if he's done something to someone else. Knowing that makes me feel like I could have done more. Fought for myself harder. To top it all off, my mother made me go knock on their door and personally apologize to him and his family. So messed up, right? To this day, I don't know who or where he is or if he ever got caught doing this to someone else. I pray he never does or did it to anyone else ever again, and I was his only victim. I live in a small neighborhood about 20 miles outside the nearest town in central Washington state. It's kind of like a German town. I moved here just after finishing middle school around two years ago. Some neighbors aren't friendly, and some are just weird but there's one person that really gives me the creeps and makes me want to close my eyes whenever I see him. This happened in the middle of July, I think in 2015. I remember my dad and I were fixing a small trampoline outside for my little brother. Then this guy comes up our long driveway just staring at my dad with a blank look. He walks right up and asks if we need any help. My dad says no, but before he can say more, the man asks, do you want to see my scars? Surprised, my dad nervously says, Uh, okay. Without waiting, the man lifts his shirt, showing lots of scars on his chest. My dad told the man to put his shirt back on and go away. The man did what my dad said, but he made a weird sound as he stepped back. See you both later, he said with a creepy smile. We were both guys, which made it even weirder. It wasn't until November of 2016 that I once again encountered the creep. Let me describe him to you. He had brown hair and a small brown mustache, plus a scar on his upper lip. He was a big guy, about 6 foot 5, and weighed around 260 pounds. He looked like he was in his mid to late 40s. Seeing him again was pretty intimidating. On this day, I was driving around in my golf cart when I turned toward my house. I saw him about 100 feet away. As I got closer, he stared at me with a cold and serious look on his face. I quickly looked away and didn't glance back because I felt he was still staring. I didn't see that guy often, but whenever I did, I felt a bit nervous and got a chill down my spine. My family calls him the Vaseline Man because he looks shiny when he takes his shirt off. Lately, he went from being weird and creepy to really scary. It was around midnight, and I was staying up late watching movies and stuff. Then I heard a loud thud at my window. I got scared and jumped back on my bed. Then after a few seconds, I thought it might be a bird or something. I peeked out, but I couldn't see anything, so I decided to go back to my movie. About five minutes later, there's another loud thud at my window, even louder this time. I tried to ignore it and go back to watching my movie, but then there's another thud and another. Getting annoyed, I quickly went to the window and opened the shades. Now guess who's there? It's the Vaseline man, looking really angry and staring at me. I showed him my middle finger and went outside to talk to him. He didn't move at all from the window and kept staring at me like he could see into my soul. I yelled at him, telling him to leave or I'd call the police, but his look was something else, like the face a disappointed kid makes when they can't have a toy or a video game. It was really weird, especially coming from a big middle-aged man like him. I heard him say this from outside the window. I'm going to get you one day. Right after that, he turned around and walked into the nearby woods. Now thinking about it, I should have called the police, but I was scared it would cause a big problem. I have no clue what he's up to or what he wants from me, but I guess only time will tell. I had a neighbor across the alley who always hung out in his garage. The large door was always closed, but the smaller side door would be open when he was in there. 
Most often he was in there from 5 p.m. to a.m. or so. He was retired military so he didn't work. I would randomly pop over after two or three beers to chat. He was always in there smoking cigarette and drinking black coffee. I have never in my life heard stories crazier than the shit he used to tell me. He told me that he saw a dinosaur while he was serving. I don't remember the specific name, but it was like an ankylosaurus. He went on and on about the details of the situation. No matter how much I pushed back, he was always calmly insistent. He also told me that there is a secret band of Sasquatch that currently live around the world and have massive influence on the goings-on of our society. In addition to this, there is a very special breed of Sasquatch that can travel through time. They come to our present from the future to lure or kidnap females to their present in order to better populate their time or world. The politics that have evolved between all of the different sects of Sasquatch are tense and political. Just mentioned this the other day. Had just moved into a rural area into a storage shed. I was fitting out to be something like a tiny home, and I was living there as I did the work. Well on day two of being there day after the first night there, I was woken up to my neighbor sitting in my chair, helping himself to my candy. Lucky for him, I kept the gun by the door, and he was between me and it. Being that it was a shed originally built for storage, there wasn't any way to lock it from the inside, just a simple latch. By the end of the day, I had bought the hardware to be able to bar the door with a 2x4. I later found out that that neighbor was or is constantly high on something, usually paint thinner meth if he can get his hands on it. Actually getting ready to move back to that property, and I think he still lives next door, but luckily my new neighbor on the other side is a county deputy. When I was in college, I took courses over the summer once. I had an early 8 a.m. class, so I would often go back to my apartment and take a nap afterward. I lived on the ground level, and had this big window that would open up in the living room right above the couch. I loved taking naps in the sun, and feeling the warm summer breeze blowing in. Until one morning, I woke up to my neighbor's face directly above mine. Super creepy. He couldn't understand why I was mad. Had a neighbor who'd been asked to leave his previous job to avoid a series of S harassment cases against him. He was easily in his late 50s, mid 60s, with a wife in her late 20s and three young children. He's was constantly belittling her, and he was constantly trying to power move on us as well, would let himself into our garden to remove trees that weren't crossing the property line, or coming to harass my mom when she was alone. He even suggested we put a gate between our gardens to make it easier for him to let himself in when our front gate was locked. He used to walk around the house naked in the side that overlooked ours, and would open the blinds naked they overlooked my sister's room. We also saw him through the kitchen window fondling the au pair's breasts while she was washing dishes. In the end, his wife divorced him and took the kids halfway across the country, and I've never breathed such a sigh of relief for another human before or since. Not exactly creepy or weird, but me and my family watched as my next-door neighbors got raided because their idiot son. I'll call him Brain because his brainless brain was building a narcotics lab in the basement, and he showed it off to an undercover officer. All of them, including his mom, got arrested, and their house was torn up real bad. It's a shame, though, because his mom is a real nice, if a bit misguided woman, but luckily she got off pretty light. I grew up living on a cold de sac dead end in a nice, normal middle-class neighborhood. It was built in the late 60s, and during the time I lived there the following happened, all involving the original families who were the first to buy homes there. One neighbor who worked for the city was caught embezzling and went to jail. A kid three doors down who was a well-known bully and liked setting fires in the back alley. Wound up committing a murder unaliving with his ex-girlfriend after she got a restraining order against him. Another kid went to jail after he was caught as assaulting kids while working as a camp counselor. One day two huge trucks pulled up to another neighbor's house. One was a moving truck and another had an industrial shredder. Box after box of documents were shredded. Nobody saw the actual family leave, they apparently went in the middle of the night. 
A few days after the trucks left the police came around canvassing the neighbors asking everyone if they knew where the family went. No one did. Never saw any of them again and never did find out what happened there. Another family had a son with mental health problems who one night attacked both his parents with knives. The father died, the mother survived after a month in hospital, the son barricaded himself in the house and committed S before the SWAT team moved in. All this happened across like 15 houses. The neighborhood itself has a great location in the city near parks and downtown, with big yards and good schools, and so has become very popular. These days when someone moves away the buyer often tears the original house down and builds a McMansion. When my mom finally sold the house a few years ago, I briefly considered buying it from her and doing the same. Then the movie it came out and we decided maybe something like that horrible clown was lurking on the cul-de-sac and decided not to. My current neighbor. He used to lean on our fence to watch me and my dog play in the yard, and he was the only neighbor my dog absolutely hated Rip Achilles. Lately, I guess he has fallen on to hard times and has asked my mom and our other neighbors to borrow our cars since he doesn't have one we later found out it was repoed. His power has been shut off to his house and he's been sneaking into ours and the neighbor's barns to sleep in and charge his phone. My mom would have offered to have him stay in ours since it's heated and it's been below freezing if the police were not constantly staking out at his house and asking all the neighbors if we've seen him. Apparently they have been trying to catch him since we moved here four years now. We have no clue why and we're not the, the type to judge someone based on their hard times. But he's also tried shoving his way into our house several times and my mom's not comfortable with him trespassing since it's just the two of us that live there and we're not sure what the police want with him. Thanks for listening. If you like our work, do subscribe because your support helps us keep this channel alive.